Imagine having to get permission from officials in the government to trade, invest, or even start a business. That would be bad, but you could live with it, right? Now imagine having to pay an unofficial tax, in essence a bribe, to just keep your job. That would be even worse. Finally, imagine being punished for saying bad things about who's in charge or playing video games for too long. Corruption is the use of government power by officials for illegitimate personal gain. There may be several connotations for the word corruption, and different things may pop into your mind. For some, it's serious reality. For others, it's something they've read in a fiction book. The definition, however, is usually the same across the board. The reason government corruption is so important is simple. It could happen to your government. It could happen to anyone's government. Every government in the world is liable to government corruption. In any government, there are people in power who have great influence over the lives of a country's citizens. Whether in a monarchy, an oligarchy, a democracy, or a republic, there's always going to be an imbalance of power. In the United States, for example, a regular citizen can order a missile strike on a country, but officials in power can do that. Because of this imbalance, there are many systems in modern day countries that prevent the government from becoming too powerful. However, the nature of government is to grow, to expand. Many people in power look to override these systems so that they can get more power and more benefit to themselves. That is the essence of corruption. Even in the best democracies and the best republics, there's always going to be a way for certain officials to try to climb to the top and get more and more power. Those examples I named earlier, they're all true. In Tunisia, you have to have connections to the family in power to be able to invest or start a business. In Chechnya, unless you pay your bribe to the head of the republic, you can't keep your job. In China, there's a social credit system in which behaviors determine outcomes. If you behave a good way, you get points. If you behave a bad way, you lose points. And these points determine a lot of freedoms like traveling. How then can a good government fall into the hands of corrupt officials? This is the government. And these are country's citizens. Let's say this government is a representative democracy or a republic. That means that the government is indirectly run by the people. These people vote in politicians to represent them in the government. These politicians make up the government. Now that citizens have voted them in, they then make laws regarding the lives of all the citizens. But sometimes it only appears that way. Let's take a closer look. This is one of the politicians. He needs money to be able to go on a campaign so he has a chance to win. To keep it simple, let's say he can get money from two different sources. Donors or lobbyists. Sure, donors can give a good amount of money, but not as much as lobbyists can. The only way a politician can get money from a lobbyist is to promise to make policies that benefit the lobbyists. Once the deal is arranged, the politician gets the money, thus leaving both the lobbyist and the politician happy. Taken to an extreme, however, this can be a kind of bribery, and the citizens are all but forgotten. This is just one example of corruption, but there is a solution. By taking the lobbyists out of the picture, the citizens have direct control over who's in office. This, along with many other things, are manifestations of corruption. And it's up to us, the citizens, to make sure it doesn't happen. And if it's already happening, it's up to us to make sure it stops. As a citizen, you have power, even if it's a little bit of power. By standing up to corruption, you're making the world a better place, one country at a time. Thanks for watching.